Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to uh, this week's month. No, this fortnight uh, <laughs> as Eurish Live. Uh, I am Liam Gulliver, and joining me as always are Jonathan Ralph and Pete Gallagher. Hello. Uh, I would figured we'd, we'd probably c carry on working through our. Uh, Git Watcher solution, where we're taking a look at Blazor and Azure Signaler and um, Azure Functions. And you know, last time we had a quick dabble with the the uh, static web app preview as well. Um, but uh, we we came across a couple of issues. Now in the break, um, we had a, a look between the two. Um, and it, we just realized that one of the things that we we're missing there, because we're using the Azure Signaler service rather than, and uh, sorry, and Blazor WebAssembly standalone, uh, we actually do need to have uh, an Azure function that acts as like the, the connection broker between the static app and um, and the Azure Signaler service. Um, so I guess let's let's kind of go from from there. Um, Jonathan, you're are you still comfortable with driving today? Yeah, if you could start your live share from your side and give us the link. Uh, I only can I would, do. Given second. the fact that last episode was a lot of time getting your machine to have the right SDK, I figured that we might as well <laughs> pick up from that point rather than using mine and having a whole new set of problems. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> it's true. Hold well, on, did, let me. Well, I mean, we learned a lot. You know, this is real life. Yeah. And also last time we were discussing the, um, while he's sorting that out, have you done much with .NET 5 yet, um, Pete? Yes, actually. Um, I don't know. Uh, it'd be difficult to see. If I pick my uh, webcam up ah, and point it down here. Oh, hello. I don't know if you can see that. I'm, I'm robot arm. There we are. That's um, a robot arm and a Raspberry Pi 4 and this little thing called a Monk Makes Servo 6 board. Um, All right, yeah. So I've got um, I mean, that Raspberry Pi. I've got a script that you can use to install .NET 5 on it with one single line. Um, and then I've got some code that I can drive um, the servos with. There's something called .NET device bindings, and it's um, uh, a Microsoft open source library mm. of device control code, dead good, including PWM and servo code. Uh, so you can pick that up, and there's yeah. the example code and everything in there. It's dead good. Mm. Um, and I've got that hooked up then to... Signal R, and I've got a Blazor app running on my machine here, and I can control the ARM parts with Signal R um, over the network. So, I think we yeah. just found our Signal R Blazor expert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Expert searcher. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much what we do. Oh, thanks, Liam. That's got the link. There we go. So, let's just fire up live share. So uh, we did a bunch of stuff in a dev branch last time, um, but I don't. I, I think we can probably not do that <laughs> ultimately. Yep. Um, and switch back to switch back to master. Why did you do that? I can't remember why we were in the dev branch. Because uh, we because we broke it. How did we? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> uh, so I'll quick. I'll switch to switch to main and uh, let's do a quick git fetch. And uh, before I switch to the code screen. All right, live share is doing its spinny loading file tree, so I'll be with you in a second. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I apologize as well, folks. I've got a bit of a cold today as well. As normal. Uh, mine is the other side on the chair by the, the PC that's doing the streaming. And these... Uh, He's been very needy today, so I expect him to maybe pop up and make an appearance and yell at me until uh, I pay him attention. You could call it per programming. Oh, <laughs> oh. I think so. Have you got the facility to kick him out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I've just, I've just seen he's managed to somehow leave the collaboration session. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. what's that happen? I've got the folders loaded, but my live shares. Oh, and it's doing activating extensions. Hang on, it'll probably catch up again in a second. Oh, it, it, your VS Code not updated in a little while, or extensions? No, well, oh, I've had it open beforehand. 
Uh, whilst we're getting sorted, one thing that is always worth pointing out to everybody is that if you go to the link that should be just above my head now, you can actually go to the repos that we have for the show uh, and you can contribute along with us or um, take a look at what we're doing and, and, and even contribute after the show as well. Um, right, are you in, Jonathan? Uh, I am. I can see Git Watcher, but with nothing in it. <laughs> Good. And I've got index.razor open and Visual Studio is looking at me going, oh, yeah. Ah, uh, the old sign in nonsense. Uh, okay, well, we'll, we'll give it a, we should give it a minute. I'll switch to the, uh, to us plus the, yes, the screen. Uh, providing I have that running, I do have that running. There we go. Oh, technology is great when it works. It is, it is. Uh, I've, uh, what do you call it as well? Um, since putting that other monitor up in here, uh, mm. I've got everything running on there and it seems to be, seems to be okay. Um, and, just a little bit easier to manage rather than trying to do it all, all across an ultra wide. Um, you what? Yeah. You're, you're quite okay. a fan of ultra wide monitors, though, aren't you? Me? Yes. Mm. And, and Pete? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're just pretending you're on the, the Enterprise, aren't you, really? Yeah. I would I'd say that mine probably does isn't big enough. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, this is the lunchtime show, folks. I was going to say that's something to <laughs> keep to yourself. <laughs> is that why you close yourself in a little square space with a green thing behind you? Look. It is, yeah, yeah. It makes it look a bit bigger the closer I am to it. <laughs> oh dear me! Quickly moving on. Um, <laughs> What's the, next, <laughs> what's the next bit we need to do while... while so, the last time, we would, so one of the things Jonathan and I took a quick look at in between is we were we would take a look at building an issue watcher as a, as a, as a side project just to make sure we vaguely look like we know what we're doing. Um, and yeah, so one of the things that we need to do is we need to create a... Uh, a connection, this connection broker thing. So... We move stuff around, so we have this front end, and we've got this function, and we've got the function for the commit watcher, and this is this is grabbing all our stuff out. Um, but we need to add in a, another function. Um, let me let me rename this folder. Actually, um, let's call it uh, backend. No, yeah, backend, and then or uh, no, commit. We need another function. Watcher. What for? We do need another function. Yes, this is going to be our connection broker. So if we create a new folder, um, Jonathan, I think you can do that even through the live share stuff if you if you're in. Not quite yet. I, I cool. don't, I don't know what's Jonathan from the from the. Uh, he's a black square, is Jonathan? I have. I've just deliberately because you know using your mobile device as a webcam is a really good idea. Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah. I'll be back with you in a second. I'll be back. It's either that or I start playing the uh, the intro. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. We need a technical technical difficulties uh screen. Yeah. <laughs> so what did we do? We did, we created a new folder before, didn't we? Um <clears throat> so let's call it connection broker. This was another function app, and, and this is what we missed out on doing last time because uh, our our Blazor app is or should be standalone, and with it being standalone, it means that you know we can't we can't run the the signal R signal R uh, server as part of the app because it, it would need to be there all the time. Um, because you need to have the ASP.NET Core hosted option enabled to be able to do that, which we do not. No. Uh, your microphone is very um, clippy and loud. I don't know if that's... Oh, it might be a bit closer to my face. There we go. Yeah, that's a little bit. Yeah. My ears were bleeding. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it just a bit close to my face. Oh, I see Jonathan. Yep, I'm back. There he is. Uh, okay, so um, 
But you're talking about an Azure function here. Yes. So how's that different to what we've already got in the Azure function that we've got on the screen? Well, I mean, we could do it all in the same function. I, I mean, in my in my mind, one of the I, I like to separate it out. So we have. Uh, I know it actually doesn't matter for this, but I was going too granular. So let's 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 get rid of that. That you're right. Let's just thinking of the, the extra time and spinning up another yeah, function. You're, you're completely right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you're right, microservice architecture um, is probably a good idea. But I mean, for saying that this is dead simple as it is already, I don't mind mixing those two things. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And that's that's the correct way to go about it, really, isn't it? Good. Um, I mean, yeah, it's good to debate these things and just make sure that we're not missing something along the way. So, Yeah, I mean, the, the benefit of us all having a collective experience across development of easily... 50, 60 years combined uh, is that, you know, we will quite easily slip into the trap of over-engineering stuff. <laughs> so it's, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot to be said for that. I mean, at the moment, we are really kind of just spiking this, aren't we? So therefore, this kind of, we, we're aware that we could split this out into two parts. So that's half the battle, really. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, at least, at, at the very least, oh, we could probably put the same function inside the same file, right? Um, are you in? Are you into live share, Jonathan? Um, signing in is still scrolling its little wheels. Okay. You still, uh, you still sound a bit. Uh, what is it with your mic today? It just is clipping. Um, are, are you on? The, are you on the wrong mic? Dot com. Are you on your earbuds rather? Than... Uh, no, I shouldn't be. Uh, I'm going through Nvidia Broadcast. Um, so let me, let me back to that. That might be different. I don't know. We'll yeah, give it marginally, marginally better. Let's not spend too much time on it. It's uh, yeah. we're 15 minutes in already. <laughs> uh, oh, they've changed the they've changed the uh, Git lens stuff, which is nice. Um, right. Okay. So let's take a quick look at this. So we're going to add in a another function, but to do that, this function needs to have the um, the signaler connection info attribute um, and to do that we need to add in if we haven't already so let's just check our git watcher cs proj uh, of which we have two for some reason uh yeah so we need to add in a new get package yep signal like new get yeah the uh so with the new get package we need to add oh jonathan has joined there the new get package we need to add is uh, so let's move into function .net and uh, Microsoft Microsoft dot so, visual dot dot signal or? web jobs. Oh, okay. What? Oh, yeah. Because uh, this is don't forget, this is a function. Ultimately, I think it's still the same stuff underneath that is just the the web jobs stuff from times of old. Really? Okay, I'm just yeah. looking at the bedding started with Azure Signal R service in GitHub. Uh, <laughs> what are you looking at? The code that Jonathan and I wrote a couple of. Oh, uh, add package, sorry. I could be, but I mean, um, it's the first time I've looked at this page, but uh, Azure Signal R service is based on ASP.NET Core Signal R framework and supports blah, blah, blah. Both are genuinely available. Please note different frameworks require different Azure Signal R SDK. And ASP.NET Core Signal R, um, it is packaged Microsoft.Azure.SignalR to install. So that is a different thing. Okay. Um. So the, the um, find the thing. So the package that we installed, uh, oh dear, I really need to go back and update my blog because it's way out of date, um, is, so the, the ASP.NET Core stuff is for, you know, when you've got the client and you've got the, the, the server in one app, whereas we're looking at just a, a specific package that's going to add in, um, if I go into our commit watcher.cs can I bring everybody's attention to here where was it oh it was a 
focus participants. So what we're going to add in just a second is this um, extra function for negotiating a connection and the the yeah. I, I don't know the proper name of it so please uh, correct me in the chat if i'm wrong but we're going to add in a um the the signal r connection info attribute to a http trigger oh, okay uh, cool. and i think that only exists in this um package which is for for Azure functions now I caveat that with saying it's not very often, other than Pete, who uh, writes code more regularly than 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 Jonathan or I, that we we'll, that we do this stuff. So we could be completely wrong. Um, <laughs> and Pete's code is usually written for IoT devices, so it's a whole different other kettle of fish <laughs> to this. Uh, yeah. Um, just, uh... I'm just traversing through the docs, which is kind of like the whole point of what we do on the show. But uh, there's a signal R service trigger binding for Azure Functions, and you can use yes, that's, the, that's the word R we were looking trigger for. Binding. Trigger binding, um, and yeah, you you create a serverless hub, uh, and then yeah, use attribute signal R parameter to simplify parameter names. And yeah, I mean, I'm skipping through mm -hmm. a particular page. I'm just I, and now that I'm a mod i think i could probably put a link in the chat so um, oh, that is the page that i am looking at yep okay. um and that's specifically for trigger binding for azure functions from signal r so i'm guessing that this it should be what you're talking about in your blog but i, yeah. I can't remember looking at this so we're we popping it in this class file then or are we creating a separate? Uh, let's create. Let's just create it in this class file. Um, yeah. So, uh, do you want to do? Now you're in the live share. Do you want to no, do I'm that, Jonathan? There. Are we just popping it at the, afterwards, like yeah. we did last yeah, time? Yeah, a new a new class. So we're going to do function name. Oh, a whole new class or or a. Uh, sorry, uh, method. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then we called it negotiate. negotiate. Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to do a new public static uh, signal R. It's not caught up connection. Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, and then we call get, that get signal R info. Oh, thank you. Autocomplete. <laughs> I mean, we can do it as that if we want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the. So the, this is this do... is the complicated bit where we're saying yeah, HTTP trigger. Authorization yep. level dot function. And yeah, then we'll allow get and post. Get and post. And then. Yeah, because we don't need any that. special routes for this. And then we're going to make that the request object. We're going to introduce uh, and then, the old logger. Yep. Yeah. And then this is the bit where we add, uh, what was the what was the right term for it, Pete? Sorry. A trigger binding. That's it. So we've got this, this well, that's a new one. It's not that one. Um, not that. <laughs> and we're going to give it a hub name. Now, we just called it chat hub in our example, but we can call it whatever we want here, I think. So let's call it, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, let's call it uh, commit hub. I mean, realistically, we should call that GitHub. Yeah. Um, uh, so this is another signal connection info object, which is we're just going to call signal connection info. Yeah, and then what we'll have is we'll be able to pull that from our host.json. I mean, we're going to do this from our from our local dot settings dot json. Um, the brackets, and then we just want to return connection info out of that. We probably want to stick a log information in there to say we're negotiating a connection. Okay, we'll do that first. Uh, log dot log information. So who's who's hitting this uh, get signal R info? Um, the signal R service, isn't it? So yeah, this will be our our Blazor app. We'll talk to this. So when we when so where we've got our our signal client in the in the Blazor standalone piece that will connect to this function app, and then it will negotiate a connection via this up to our Azure signal serverless service. Mm -hmm. And it passes all that signal uh, connection info down. Now uh, these are red because I'm assuming what we don't have at the top of the page is adding in our using for the new um, extension. Mm -hmm. 
which it should give Sorry. you a peek to be able to fix that automatically. But uh, it probably does, but let me. I'm, I'm there now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so dot jaw. Sorry, have you got a docs link? I know you've got your blog, but have you got a docs link to this particular pattern that you've got there? It's not on the page that I've got, so. Uh, no, because I think I just made it up as I went along. <laughs> <laughs> I, I oh, kind of just, I'm sure I there. looked at something when I was when I was doing it. So I'm, sure, I'm sure there's they, I'm like I probably that, used probably. like a set of stuff and then figured it out as we went along. Yeah, but I th I'm pretty sure there's there's I'll stuff that will exist. While Liam's tinkering uh, oh, here we are. Azure functions development the serverless real time negotiate function the client application requires a valid access token and blah 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 um, with the class based model in C sharp you don't need signal R connection info input binding and can add custom claims which are much easier <laughs> is it <laughs> oh, <probably. laughs> let me uh, just paste the link to that I mean it's good to put these links in oh jeez uh, Put these links in the chat anyway isn't it yep. um so that people can see what it is we're talking about in fact i'm just going to leave all of that big long link in there oh, it's not giving me it anyway but um negotiate function yes yeah, so a client application requires a valid access token and then a little bit further down in that paragraph of a few paragraphs of text with class-based model in c-sharp you don't need signal r connection info input binding and can add custom claims much easier so you negotiate experience in class-based model I think maybe that takes you to the page that I was looking at, maybe. Um, no. That's so the kind of thing that I'm looking at, if I just pop this in, believe me, if just check if you think this is the same, is that in Azure samples, Pete, there is a signal our service quick start, which was some of the information. So the kind of function that we've just written looks ah. very similar to that quick start. That was, I mean, okay, it's a year old now. That certainly oh, is linked, linked to from a page that is this one, which is Signal Service Quick Start. That one, yeah. So, uh, that function, see that function name negotiate that we've mm. got now. Does that give you the HTTP root essentially that it's talking about? In yeah. Yeah, so because we call it slash negotiate, it will route to whatever our function URL will be forward slash negotiate. Yeah. Okay, well, let's just stick with what we've got because otherwise we're going to be forever. Um, well, there's always a million ways of doing the same thing. It's absolutely. Good to know. Yeah. Get this working, then potentially if we wanted to, we could come back, circle back and... and yeah, for sure. Okay, so, so we've got those things now. Uh, the the other thing, uh, so we we refactored the the solution last time didn't we so we had the front end and yes. what you call it and we haven't made that build and work yet <laughs> so let's do that now one of the things that jonathan and i uh discovered uh, and i keep saying jonathan and i because pete is such a busy man that he's been so busy recording new plural site courses so uh jonathan and i went off and spiked to save pete the pain of dealing with us um <laughs> so <laughs> i love you guys <laughs> we're here for you pete don't worry so yeah, so the the did, we we didn't try no the envy the episode one was where we did the minimum viable build didn't we so yeah you're right yeah uh, and what we what we did in in the break is uh, so in Visual Studio Code we set it up so that you could run more than one project at a time yep um, and that you know that seemed to work we haven't done that here but let's let's just make sure that we can build our individual pieces first. And then I think we'll go from there. Good idea. So we've got uh, our attached to .NET functions, but we don't actually have our uh, piece in there for our front end, which is all our Blazor app. So let's get that in there too. Um, so in terminal, I've just managed to, in the function subdirectory, the .NET build command runs fine. So that's good to know. Yeah. So that's sorry. Well, that was in the functions directory. That was in the function subdirectory. Yeah. So if we drop up a folder and go to uh, front end, and then do the same. Yeah. Also tickety boo. So 
what we need to do is we need to add in a configuration to cater for our um what do we call it? So I'm doing really well with the words today. The mouth words, <laughs> all of the mouth words. Um, <laughs> so uh, we need to add one in for launching and debugging a standalone Blazor WebAssembly app. Yep. Um, so we need to add in a configuration. And I believe I it's just an option in here. Yeah. If you just press F5, it'll automatically say, oh, well, as long as you're in that particular. Oh, does it? Uh, I thought I thought we could just. Uh, okay. Yeah. Give me a second then. Yeah, so if you go to, that's it, and then hit F5, it'll probably say, oh, do you want to add a configuration for that? To specify a project solution or file, the current working directory does not contain a project solution or file. Uh, go to mm. program.cs or frontend.cs proj. I think that's it. Now okay. try it. So oh, yeah. error. Oh, okay, well, that's annoying. Maybe it's because we've got more than one in there and it's confused it, but yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I tell you what we'll do. Do it your way. <laughs> well, yeah, let's let's so let's remove our front end folder because we had this slight problem before, didn't we? So yeah, we I'm going to remove that and let's do a new folder or a new uh, thing. We're going to get watcher. Uh, and what did we do? It's uh, we did dot net, no, no, dot net new. Uh, and we're going to do uh, oh, um, yeah, we've lost Jonathan again, he's gone. Uh, he has his, his sound has gone too. Yeah, yeah. it's going really well for us today. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this, this we've made uh, about eight lines of code <laughs> it's, it's more than we wrote last time uh, is right? I can't remember yeah, I blocked that out <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's, uh, he's oh that's you okay it is I, I, he, he's yellow uh, oh he's pink oh there he is his little pink live share icon still there oh, he's back look I'm here sorry Right. Real life. So, dot com. Uh, yes. We want to do a dot net new uh, Blazor WebAssembly standalone. Uh, and all we have to do to do that is literally do dot net new Blazor Wasm. Uh, and then we're going to output that to, uh, let's call it a client folder. Uh, the that's the default. You know, if you want to do hosted with uh, ASP.NET Core and all that sort of stuff, you do dash dash hosted. Is that uh, what you, you also... do? Say again, sorry. You just made it hosted, yeah. Uh, no, I've done it the other way. So oh. serverless, so we don't need to worry about any of that. We can literally host app storage account if you want to. Um, but the the static web app preview lets you do the hosted flavor, I believe. Um, we've also not bothered with doing the, the security and identity stuff yet, but you can do that with saying, I want to use individual B2C and all sorts, but we'll, we'll do that in a, in a further episode. So we have our client. Uh, I want to hit F5 and get the same error. Does not contain a project or a solution file. Okay. So let's go in and add in Let's try adding the configuration that we're after, uh, which should be. Are you pressing that add configuration button in the bottom right hand corner? Uh, I did, but it didn't come up with the actual options that we need. <laughs> oh, today. Let me take that out. Uh, and we're going to client and go from there. We now go to our debugger, which we've got in the top left. Yep. We've got launch and debug. Unable to find a Chrome. Yeah, I know I don't have Chrome, but that's fine. So that's now running, and I can go to my browser. I can go to uh, localhost uh, 5000 or 5001, and then, you know, there you go. You can see it, you can see it running. So that's, that's yep. built. Yeah. Woohoo! 
Do you mean we actually accomplished something? We have <laughs> done a thing. <laughs> Give yourselves a, a pat on the back. We've done a boilerplate thing. Yeah. yeah. We saw some vanilla. There's purple. <laughs> there's words. Yeah. <laughs> right, next, what do we need to do now then? So the next thing we need to do is we actually need to tell our, our client now that it's going to connect to our signaler service or rather our, our negotiate thing. Yes. Um, one thing I want to do before we get into that uh, to save ourselves a lot of bother and, and headaches is change our uh, launch options uh, so that we launch both the uh, function app excuse me, uh, and the blazer site at the same time so it's like running a whole solution in uh full fat visual studio yes now we can do that through uh where did we do that before uh it back in our launch json so we're here so you can add something called compounds so if i do uh compounds and that lets us run at multiple configurations at the same time so So, uh, to make this a lot easier, I'm just going to quickly rename these, uh, and we're going to do Blazer, and we're going to do Function, uh, because what Jonathan has done there, where he's added the configurations in, is it's literally done by the name of the configurations above. So now when I go to here, we've got Blazer, Function, and Run It All, and if I hit Run It All, um, Let's ignore the Chrome thing because I don't use Chrome. Um, we've got a couple of errors, which I think are... Have just you got your Azure storage running? Say again, sorry? To run locally, don't you need Azure storage running as well? I Lo do Azure need Azure storage, storage running. Uh, I use uh, the Azureite extension for Visual Studio Code, which basically means we can run it uh, in there and at the bottom of the screen should see like I've got a bunch of stuff here. So we've got the Azure blob service. If I click that, mm. there's my blob service running already. I've been using Storage Explorer emulator. Yes, that's what I tend to use. But um, Azure Rite's really good, certainly if you're on a Mac as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that That's kind of or, or almost the, the the point here where we can do a little bit of everything and do it cross platform. Uh, so we'll come back and we'll, we'll sort that problem shortly. Uh, the mm -hmm. first thing we're going to do uh, whilst we're this far along is I'm going to do a git add dot. What have we done? We've, uh, we've there's recreated. A, there's a stretch goal for Git Watcher when we've got it included in the stream. Is a, a, a It changes color if we've not committed for a while. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Calls us out. Yeah. So we've got those running. You could do a dead easy refresh on the on the page, I guess, couldn't you? A little bit of JavaScript that just refreshes it, and yeah, you could do that. But... Yeah, I've, I've I've got some ideas for that because I've already done a a thing so let's for just... OBS. Oh yeah, you actually did like that lower third thing, didn't you? I did. Yeah. So let's see it about running this function on its own. Um, so that's that's currently causing us a problem. So let's go and f change that. I think that's that's our that's our problem because we know our Blazor app works. Yes. Um, you can also see that we've got these these Azure right things that have been created now because I've got the blob uh, storage emulator running. Uh, so we've got where are we looking? We're looking for VS Code. Yeah, I'll launch JSON again. So that looks correct to me. <laughs> Is that of interest? Just hover where it says Blazor and Function. Because I think on mine it's suggesting that there's still the accepted values or the old the old names. Oh, okay, so let's and I don't know why that is. If it's just not built correctly. Essentially, uh I mean That's running at the moment, so let's... Look at that. The host has shared a server, localhost 5001 with you. Yeah. I didn't know you could do that. That's it's cool. super smart, live share. So let's try running Blazor on its own with that name. Yeah, immediately complains that I don't have Chrome. 
Um, and yeah, that's running. So I think I I think that error is erroneous. Or the 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 linting. Um, so we have our client, we have our function, but I think this is this is the problem that we came up against before. So let's let's create our um, our function separately. Um, and create a new project, and we're going to do it in Git Watcher, and then we'll create a folder in here. Let's create. Let's call it uh, backend for now. We'll go into there. We'll do C sharp, and we'll skip that for now because I think that'll help solve this problem ultimately. And now, interesting. So you can see how these are identical in launch JSON. Um, but let's get those. That I think the best thing to do is for us to move the code over because we've only got the one file that we need to worry about there. So let's just take other configuration out and rename it in here. So we've got our, our commit watcher file. Mm -hmm. And I think the easiest thing for us to do would be to let's just just out of curiosity here. Uh, no, it is that one. I want to create a function. Create a function. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, let's not do that right now. Because we had this problem where we were doing our little bit to the side, yeah, our little spike that we did. So we've got our back end thing in there. I'm going to just copy this for now. I'm going to paste it into there. Uh, and we need to make sure that we've got our relevant uh, singular service stuff. Yep. Just add that in. I'm going to move this function folder out of the project directory for now, mm -hmm. just so that it's not interfering. Um, projects, Jurish, repos, git watcher. Uh, where it would be. Uh, that doesn't feel like that's the right place. Oh, it's projects. Check out. Jurish, git watcher. Just going to um, literally cut it and paste it somewhere else for the time being. Okay, so now we've got all of those. Um, now we had to do one other thing before we could get this working in our spike, uh, where we had to tell the function to use um, local storage. Can you remember what the connection string is for that, Jonathan? Uh, let me just get that. Uh, trying to see where we saved that. Was that in host.json? Uh, it would have been in local.settings.json. Hmm. Was it not? Uh, is... So is it the connection broker slash bin? No, that's the deploy subpath. No. So it's like use development storage equals true or something like that, isn't it? Oh, that one. Right, sorry. Yes, I'm looking in the wrong place. I think, I think it's literally those right. words, actually, now I think about it. So let's... Back that in there and try and run our function app and see if we can solve that problem. Well, that's a lot more promising. Uh huh. So, projects to restore. Mm hmm. Function host start. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, do that. Blah, 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 blah. Call stacks. Later warnings, and it's. But that is because. We haven't actually added the connection string, so that's correct. Yes. Yeah. You know, for for all intents and purposes, this is doing the right thing. Okay. So we've got our local settings JSON. Uh, let's go to the Azure portal. Uh, 
And so we've got our signal service, signal service that we made earlier. We have our keys, we have our connection string. Have you got your AZ mask thing on? Yes, you have. I do. Okay. Um, so I am going to very quickly move Visual Studio Code over here. So we're we're after a specifically named connection string, aren't we? Mm -hmm. As well. Uh, what's the what was it? Uh, that was a good good question. Uh, from myself to myself. Mm, I'm just trying to find it in the sprite. Uh, it's the Azure Signal Alert connection string is the whole thing that we need to do. So for the folks at home, that looks like that at the moment. It's literally Azure Signal Alert connection string. Paste that in. Just Let's realized that. that's, that's why I'm not seeing it because, of course, that wouldn't have been checked in to get. Yes. Because we do like some level of security on our show. <laughs> Absolutely more. Um, so now that we've added that, let's try running the function again. Things happening. Stuff's occurring. Yeah. So let's just maximize that for a moment. Mm -hmm. We can ignore this warning. Okay. Um, I, we found out why we can we can ignore this warning. I don't yeah. remember what it is, but you, well, we found out you could. There's a, basically it's one of those sort of almost Google Wax where that um, people are saying that it's it's a it's a known thing, but <laughs> there's no indication yeah. of when it's going to get fixed. But for the most part, so now what we can see here is we actually have our function there. We can see that uh, it's it's registered both functions that we've got inside our function app. So we've got our commit watcher um, and we've got the, the negotiate. Uh, so how do you feel about doing some wiring up, gents? Yeah, let's do it. What do you need to do? So we get, uh, apparently we're about we need to the... be able to close my terminal, but it's not letting me do that. So <laughs> we're going to go to index razor, you mean? Yes. Now, why can't I actually click anything inside Visual Studio Code? That's the real... I can't even close it. So, I'm just going to relaunch Visual Studio Code. <laughs> or not. Around it. <laughs> no. You are in the matrix now. <laughs> this window is no longer responding. Really? Yep. And now you get the seven different dialogues that you can choose. Oh, the host has now ended the current collaboration. Oh. Yeah, it's all right. Nice. It's all right. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. Ruined it for all of us now. <laughs> we should we should use code spaces. I would love to use code spaces. <laughs> Big fan of code spaces. Let's do live share, share, read and write. Or or we could not. Let's close that. Am I expecting something? Uh, you will be when you will be. In, so. uh, it was. It had a issue signing me in for a moment. I had the same problem as Jonathan earlier. Uh, it just hangs a little bit sometimes. Yeah. Uh -huh. There you go. And I'll make my terminal read right as well. So now we've got those. So Sorry, there you go. On. Where do I go? Uh, Slack. Uh, oh, interesting. I don't see anything in Slack. Where? Uh, the hosts. AZ live hosts. Ah, okay. Ah, yeah. Yeah. I am joining slowly. You do. So just dropping back to what we were about to do uh, is add in some wiring up. Yep. Uh, and we're going to do that in our client app. So our client app, uh, let me start this your blob service again, because we'll need that is we're just going to go in and we're going to edit the uh, index page. And we'll bid all of that off. Yep. Because we don't need there. any of that. Nearly with you. It's okay. <clears throat> yeah, a bunch of errors in my live share now. Yeah, I'm still... Oh, there we go. 
Jordan. I can see a Jonathan at least. Yay! Right, hello. Right, and so I can see this... Pete as well. Yeah. <laughs> so we might as well start uh, by the obvious: uh, the fact that we're going to be needing to use uh, Microsoft up. ASP net core signal yes uh, and what we need to do is add that yep we'll do dot net package so the, the the thing bear in mind as well folks so what we're doing right now is we're not doing this in dot net 5 yet we're doing this still in 3.1 yes. uh we've, we've just not had the luxury of the time to to get to grips with it yet so we, we're sticking with uh what we know uh so we'll do dot net package uh add package even uh, uh, what version of that package are we adding? Because we wrote this down. Yes, we did, didn't we? Uh, we're going to do Microsoft Microsoft dot sbnet core dot signal r dot client. Uh, that version is three point one point one zero. Okay, uh, so we've got that added. Then in our page, uh, you're right, Justin. So we want to add that using it at the at the top after the page. So that at page forward slash uh, Pete. Correct me if I'm wrong here, because I think you've got roughly the same amount of. I was going to say fiddling experience, which is not the, the phrase <laughs> yeah. to use. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that's the that's uh, a root for this page so this will be the index or whatever uh, as, a, as a quick example for for everybody else though this won't detract from what jonathan or pete are, are typing at the moment if i go to fetch data we have slash fetch data here as well it does the same kind of kind of thing so that'd be my url.com slash fetch fetch data yep so all we're going to add is uh, a connection to that hub so we're going to want to start off with a uh, the hub connection itself uh so that's that and then we want uh where are you typing i'm oh gosh are you not getting my changes i, I am not i'm in no, razor. No. great thanks for that what would you like to do focus participants have we got any other participants you are so you're you're in the fetch data dot razor according to this oh no i'm not oh yes. <laughs> it's nearly it's nearly pantomime season uh why can't i get you to come to see where i am what's going on one warning no oh come on live share wake up i can see that you two are in fetch data dot razor and i'm we currently in i am definitely not <laughs> no i'm, I'm in index dot razor now and maze balls this is great fun <laughs> uh, so no, what, i'll just, start i'll start taken, typing you've just taken my focus back to fetch data so something's working Definitely Ooh. not in that file. <laughs> Definitely not in yeah, that file. <laughs> Great. It looks better on my machine. Disconnect and reconnect and see what happens. Amaze balls. We were, we're into the we, last few minutes of the show. Anyway, we, you know, we were we were a little bit. We can get late this. Starting. We can get this uh, wide up though. It's not that. It's not yeah. that difficult though, is it? So no. if I start typing and then we'll just see what happens. If you want to try and reconnect to the live share session, I'm just Jonathan. clicking the re the reconnect button. So we're we're adding in uh, Microsoft dot ASP net core uh, signal dot client because that's what we're going to use here, um, and that's that's fine. I, now Blazor is great, um, but it feels like to me at least I, I don't know about uh, you chaps, but it feels like it's almost like a step backwards to an extent and putting more code in my presentation layer than needs to be. You mean instead of MVC? Yeah. Code behind. Yes. Um, I'm going to add in uh, just a H1 for now, and we're going to have at hub connection. Oh, but that doesn't exist yet. You're putting the cart before the horse a little bit there, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> I, I am, yes. <laughs> uh, I want that to be a lowercase h for now. So we're going to add in... So I, can see, uh -huh. I can see things are happening. So if you want to do the at code stuff, Jonathan. Yeah, so the the actual bit that's um that's missing, so the putting the the horse back in front of the cart uh, is to create that variable for hub connection, and then we're also going to create a uh, read only string for the function at base URI, so that we can know where we're going to call. And at the moment, yeah. if we're developing this locally, we're just going to use an unsecured local host link. 
Is it still 7,000? Uh, it's, ju it's just HTTP rather than HTTPS as well. Oh, yeah. That's just out of habit. So it shows how secure am I? I'm typing that uh, without you do, uh, slash API uh, forward slash. And that's it. So there's that. Uh, and then we're going to want to... So now we need override. to override the, the odd initialized async for the, for, the, for the page. So that as the page initializes, we connect to our Azure function, which then brokers our connection to the singular service. I've got all of this in my uh, .NET 5 uh, um, robot arm control app. Exactly the same piece of code, of course. Oh, is it? That's yeah. quite, quite cool. Yeah, I like that. So we use that base URI to build our connection string. Now we would, like in normal circumstances, we would have uh, a a config file uh, that would have our URL in. But the thing to bear in mind with Blazor standalone is that that whole app gets downloaded to the client browser, and when that happens, that means all of the settings and stuff goes with it. So unless you're doing something to uh, encrypt what's in there and then decrypt it in your app. But then, you know, they've got the DLLs on their machine. They can they can um, reverse engineer it and that kind of thing. Uh, we don't need to call it issue message. That's from our spike, Jonathan. Oh, of course it is. Sorry. Uh, it's all right. We, uh, oh, well, I'd say I could go and change that for us whilst we're there. Uh, if you want to crack on with your typing, and I'll, and I'll rename it to git message. Thank you. Um, what? What needs to happen is uh, Pete needs to pull his finger out and start doing some, some of the tracking. <laughs> he's, he's just helping because he's he's done this already. He has done yeah, this already. I'm, I'm, I'm literally, I'm, I've got my uh, robot arm code to the left of what you're doing there. I'm just looking at what the differences are uh, and they're few and far between. So, Yours Oh, that's quite good. Maybe. Uh, so you're controlling that robot arm all through Signaler? Yes. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I like it. Uh, Usually, of course, an IoT nerd, I'd be using IoT Hub, but I wanted like real-time control um, is iot hub not real time um it probably wouldn't be as good because it's not a direct connection you're going to be going through another service essentially whereas i've just got one pc straight to oh yeah, yeah that makes sense yeah I mean, it should be faster i bet there wouldn't be that much of a difference but no, that's cool so what just to, just to sort of explain what Jonathan's been typing here whilst we've, whilst we've been chatting. So we, what we're doing is we have our hub connection and we're connecting to it um, to deal with a type of Git message, which at the moment is just going to be a message back. Realistically, this is just going to be some JSON back at the moment. We're not doing anything. We, ha we haven't wired that bit up yet, but we've done the wiring here ready to go mm -hmm. uh, for what will be on the next show. Uh, when it receives that message, we tell Blazor that the state of the page has changed and it will refresh the UI. Um, and obviously when we we've, we've initialized the page as well you know we've we've got that uh connection started uh what we're doing with is connection we're just guessing whether or not we have connected to it um and that i think leaves us in a good place to start the lot are we feeling brave yes let's, we're feeling brave let's do, let's do it, do it. Yeah, we can ignore that. I'm, I should probably just install Chrome at some point just to get rid of that error. Or change the Edge. So that's just that's just you should. I do use Edge. Change your default launcher. That. So there's our functions host running. We have our Blazor WebAssembly app running. So now, if I go to here and I refresh the page, we're connecting. Uh, we get an unhandled error has occurred. Uh, and why do we have an unhandled error? That is a good question. Um, is that... You've got four minutes to figure it out. <laughs> well, it doesn't actually tell us. That's the thing. So It tells you the tools of the dev tools. If you're F12, it should tell, give you oh, the error. Yeah. So let's have a quick look. Yep. Fail to fetch. Oh, we need to, yeah, it's cause. Cause is the problem. Of course so, it is. Of course it is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm just here uh, for the ones, don't worry. Uh, uh. <laughs> Pete's here to appreciate them. <laughs> so I'm just going to move uh, Visual Studio Code again whilst we edit this file. Um, what are you doing now? It, in the local settings JSON for our function app, I am adding 
the cause rules to say just allow everything at the moment for the host. Why does it? And does it think that different local host is on a different? I think it's because it's a different port. Yeah, and that's a huge assumption, and I could be talking nonsense, but yeah. this this uh, this is just the the issue I've faced before, and it seems to make it work. Right. I, he says that and now. Now watch it not work. So. Oh, okay. no. Yeah, I always thought cause was like if you were going to go from like yeah Agilish Live to Agile Engineering Podcast and try and go across that way, it would, it nice. would complain. Nice, that... nice plug. Yeah, I'll try. I was going to well use done, my plug, but... <laughs> So let's refresh that page. Connecting. Connected. There we go. We so, have connected what... to our Signal Hub. So we've gone from... Um, we've gone from... The Blazor client, which is standalone, yep. to our function app, which is also running locally at the moment, which mm -hmm. has negotiated our connection up to the Azure Singular service, uh, which is also running in serverless mode, uh, and we we've, we've connected our client, that which is what we would have done last time had we paid attention to what we were doing. <laughs> and so, the SDKs updated. Yeah, I like that. That's good. So tell me, with with like warm up on Azure Functions, how is that going to work? between all of these things in what sense well I've, sometimes those azure functions can take like 30 seconds or something to to warm up or at least uh, an azure web app but it's the same thing an app service i was going to say i've not found as much of a i mean yeah I'm I'm never, wrong, like in terms of serverless where you're actually running on somebody on on their hosted yes if you were running it in app service and your app service effectively your iis in another name is is spun down then yes you would potentially have to wait for your your web app to web app service to spin up but i've found that hosted um functions serverless hosted functions don't really have much of a lead time for me anyway yeah i mean i like a, if, if everything's been completely cold um uh, i've had maybe three to five seconds on that first mm. load and then it's been fine um but you know it, it really depends on what you're what you're doing um so it, right now with this use case we're effectively we're just having a visual indicator on a web page to show on obs for our yeah. stream the timeliness of this is is less urgent i mean i agree with you pete that if you were wanting something that was uh transactional and near near real time as a chat client then those kind of delays would be problematic whereas really we're thinking that the frequency of the update of this is likely to be you know, every thirty seconds, every every minute. Yeah, of, we're not going to need to poll it that frequently, but it's a good it's a good question to ask. And the other the other thing, whilst we're running it locally, is that that function is is just spun up anyway. So if let me yeah. just flick back to the screen uh, with with the console on, you can see that you know that was that was pretty quick uh, anyway. And I don't know why the stream is just showing the browser. Oh, there we go. Yeah, um, you can see that in the in the console, what we've got is it's already running, so we, we don't have that that warm up mm -hmm. time. Uh, we're just there and going. But what we do have is how long the function took to execute. Now, I think if I'm right, and this I think this is still relevant today. Uh, and again, folks, please let us know in the chat um, if you know we're wrong. Uh, but <laughs> functions that take less than two seconds to execute and are under an amount of memory which I can't remember. Uh, I think like the first million executions are free as well. Yeah um so we've got uh our our negotiate took 131 milliseconds now if i go and refresh that page it should probably be quicker yep uh which this will update with information of 11 milliseconds that second time round. so there's a little bit of warm-up but now it's now it's all connected and mm. and there it's it's good to go that's really good that was cool yeah. So, what's what's the next step? Uh, the next step would be deploying it as yeah. is. Um, I have to change that. Actual, where, yeah, do it with with actual config settings as we deploy it in in that kind of thing. Um, interesting discussions to be had around Blazor security. client side app secret storage, which is something yeah. that Liam and I have been looking at in the background. So we'll we'll talk about that next time. Uh, and uh, then really dialing back everything that we've got in the Blazor app so that we have just our string. So actually dealing with the message that we get back and trying to hook it all up to the webhook and everything. Um, 
and then I guess we can we can look at adding it to to OBS and go yep. from there. There's a bit, and then the bit of styling and stuff which we can look at if we want to as a stretch goal as well. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, folks, um, thank you very much for for taking your lunchtime, um, assuming you're you're in the UK with us, uh, and joining us for the last hour. Um, it's good to see we got something working this time. Um, Next time, uh, we will we'll, we'll continue this. Uh, actually, I don't. I think next time falls into December. It might be the next time. Might be our festive tech calendar show. We need to we need to mm. check. Um, but also join us tomorrow night from eight pm for Azureish After Dark, where we'll be sitting down with Kayla Cinnamon from Microsoft, um, the the person that is the personification and everything that is all things Windows Terminal, um, to to chat around with Windows Terminal and play some Among Us as well. Um, so, thank you very much for watching. Um, let me let me actually work out to press the right buttons this time because I didn't last time. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and uh, we will see you again next time.